This is the tallest water slide in the world. Or rather, it was. Its record has still not been beaten, but the slide no longer exists today. That's because, in their haste to create the slide, the designers neglected to ensure it was as safe as it was extreme, leading to a grisly tragedy when a passenger was decapitated in 2016. The details of how this incident, which many saw as inevitable, was allowed to happen are just as shocking as the fatality itself. <laughs> Schlitterbahn is an American brand of water parks and resorts with a number of locations in Texas. In the mid-2000s, the company was looking to expand their business with a new water park outside of Texas. Kansas was earmarked, and plans for Schlitterbahn Kansas City included a $750 million complex. The Kansas City metropolitan area comprises Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas officials were eager to secure the proposed park in Kansas rather than the neighboring Missouri. There was a small complication though. Kansas State required all amusement parks to subject themselves to state inspection to ensure rides are safe and meet regulations. However, in its home of Texas, Schlitterbahn was not required to do this, instead conducting its own inspections. As such, Kansas State legislators passed a law allowing Schlitterbahn to continue its practice of self-inspecting in Kansas. Before Schlitterbahn Kansas City could be built, however, the recession hit, and plans had to be dramatically scaled back to $180 million. It opened in 2009, but did not have the level of success co-owner Jeff Henry was hoping for. In 2012, while at a trade show, Jeff Henry was asked by the Travel Channel's Extreme Water Parks program what he was working on. Spontaneously, he came up with the idea for the world's tallest and fastest water slide, and it was announced that this record-breaking slide would be opened mid-2013. Unable to find a contractor willing to construct his idea, Henry decided to build the slide himself, enlisting John Schooley as the ride's lead designer. Neither of the two had any technical or engineering qualifications. This did not stop them from designing Verrucht, German for insane, a 168 feet water slide consisting of a large steep drop followed by a smaller hump. The ride would send three person rafts down the chute at 70 miles per hour. With such a small window for development, Henry pushed the team to complete the necessary calculations for such a ride in a mere five weeks, instead of the usual three to six months. Development and testing of the ride was showcased on extreme water parks, with Henry and Schooley becoming increasingly frustrated with their engineers' miscalculations, as test rafts filled with sandbags were sent flying off the ramp. The ride's debut had to be pushed back a number of times, as trial and error testing led to parts of the ramp being rebuilt. Sometimes the raft would fail to make it past the second hump, although more often they would be sent hurtling into the air, a death sentence for potential passengers. By 2014, it seemed they were finally getting it right. The rafts were no longer shooting off into the air, and a safety net was installed around the ramp to prevent any such mishaps, just in case. The Guinness Book of World Records confirmed Verrucht was the world's tallest water slide at 168 feet a couple of months before it was due to finally open. However, a safety consultant hired shortly before Verrucht's opening claimed the ride was unfinished and unsafe. It was pointed out that should a raft become airborne, hitting the netting at high speed was likely to be extremely dangerous somewhat defeating the purpose of having it in the first place. The consultant recommended persons only above the age of 16 should be allowed on Verrucht, although Jeff Henry opted for a minimum age of 14. He later removed the age requirement completely just before the opening. On July 10th, 2014, Verrucht was open to the public, garnering nationwide attention and becoming a huge attraction. Only two months after its opening, it was awarded the Best New Water Park Ride at the 2014 Golden Ticket Awards. However, the ride was not without issues. 
Occasionally, a raft would still be sent airborne on the second hump, slamming passengers into the netting and the metal hoops which supported it. At least 13 riders suffered from injuries such as concussions and herniated discs. Many other passengers also noticed how close their raft seemed to come to a collision, as well as loose and ill-fitting safety straps. These incidents were allegedly covered up by the park, as lifeguards were instructed to write untruthful accounts in their reports. Despite these incidents, Schlitterbahn Kansas City, and more specifically Verrucht, continued to operate as usual until the 7th of August 2016. Ten-year-old Caleb Schwab, son of Kansas State Representative Scott Schwab, was riding in the lead seat of a raft when it went airborne over the second hump. Schwab was thrown into one of the netting's metal supports, decapitating him. The women in the two seats behind Schwab suffered a broken jaw and a facial bone fracture between them. One required stitches. Schlitterbahn Kansas City was immediately closed pending an inspection. It would reopen three days later, but Verrucht would remain closed. Inspectors determined that the likely cause of the raft going airborne was the allowance of the 10-year-old Schwab to sit in front of two much heavier people, rather than in the middle, creating an uneven weight distribution. A number of regulation guidelines were also found to have been violated, including the ride's unsafe netting design, the use of velcro straps instead of a rigid over-the-shoulder restraint, and a lack of upstop wheels to keep the rafts clamped onto the tracks. In the wake of the tragedy, Kansas revoked Schlitterbahn's ability to self-inspect. The park was hit with multiple lawsuits, which it settled out of court. Reportedly, the Schwab family received around $20 million in 2017. In 2018, Jeff Henry and John Schooley were charged with second-degree murder in addition to 17 other felonies. The prosecution pointed out the two lacked the technical expertise to design a properly functioning water slide, instead relying on crude trial and error to test the ride. The park was accused of negligence and concealing of design flaws as well as the previous incidents that had occurred on Verrucht. In 2019, the criminal charges were dropped, with a judge ruling that inadmissible evidence had been presented to the grand jury. This was due to the prosecution showing of the Extreme Water Parks episode to the jurors, which was determined to be a dramatized telling of the ride's construction, rather than a factual representation of the risks of the completed ride, as well as expert witnesses' claims that the ride violated regulations which was true, but these regulations had not existed at the time. The Travel Channel has since deleted the episode and all mentions to Verrucht, and the ride was never reopened, being disassembled in late 2018. Schlitterbahn's reputation and finances suffered greatly as a result of the tragedy, and Schlitterbahn Kansas City was never reopened after its 2018 season. Schlitterbahn sold two of its water parks in Texas to see their fair in 2019. In constructing the world's tallest water slide, one would think there would have been a lot of effort put into making it a state-of-the-art marvel. Unfortunately, this effort was instead focused on hastily opening the ride as soon as possible. Those involved must have been aware of the ride's shortcomings, but shockingly, they were never addressed, even after multiple incidents that resulted in injury. This was in a water park with set open seasons. It is a wonder the ride was not made more safe while it sat dormant in its off seasons. Sadly, it took the death of a 10-year-old boy to force them to act, and then it was too late.